All right, in this lesson, we're going to just take a quick uh, recap of genetics. And the reason why I like to do this at the very end is because up until now, you've kind of been practicing with one type of inheritance at a time. Um, and that's not really how the EOC is going to operate. It's not how your test is going to operate. Instead, what you're going to get is a genetics problem, and you just have to recognize the type of inheritance and figure out what the Punnett square is supposed to look at like when you do it. So we're going to call this genetics recap. And what we're looking at is the type of inheritance we've learned about, how you recognize it, and what does the Punnett square look like. Okay, so uh, you should have a chart of these. This is the first three lines from your chart. There are three more lines on the next slide. And then I want to talk to you about polygenic traits. Um, the first type is the autosomal. And remember, autosomal means not sex-linked, dominant and recessive. Okay, so when you have an autosomal dominant and recessive trait, there are only two alleles. Right? So you have tall, you have short, you have purple, you have white. Um, you only have one dominant and one recessive. Okay? So one dominant, one recessive. Your Punnett square, this is the basic Punnett square that you learned about in middle school. Okay? So this is not anything funny. Your basic Punnett square, the one you did in middle school, is a 2 by 2 which looks like this, right? Just a basic 2 by 2 Punnett square. Here's a big T, little T, little T, little T, and so on, right? Okay, so that's your basic autosomal dominant and recessive. So whenever it tells you, it'll either say in the problem it's autosomal dominant um, or it's an autosomal recessive trait. Um, it might even say something like, you know, it has two alleles, tall and short, uh, and the tall is dominant. All right. Incomplete dominant is the one where there is a third phenotype. It's been a while since I've done these. I'm, I'm getting worse with the stylus. Sorry about the spelling. That's third phenotype. Um, where basically with incomplete dominance, remember this is the one where the blend is the heterozygote, right? Okay, so this is our little four o'clock plants where the red plants mixed with the white plants makes pink babies, okay? So the blend is the heterozygote. Okay, blend is the heterozygote. So the heterozygote is a third phenotype. You know, again, autosomal dominant recessive, you have two phenotypes, right? Two alleles, two phenotypes. Incomplete dominant, there is a third phenotype, and that's where you get the blend in the heterozygote. Your Punnett square is still a two by two, right? Okay, but your alleles are going to be B, or sorry, R and R prime, right? Or R, W, R prime. R or something like that, something like that on a Punnett square. So you're going to have these these alleles here. Let me write that out differently. R prime and R. Okay. Codominant also has a third phenotype. Okay. This time instead of the blend, you see both. Okay, so in the heterozygote, you're going to see both in the heterozygote. Again, you still have the 2 by 2 Punnett square, this time with the B and B prime, but now you've got your black chickens and your white chickens, right? Or your checkerboard chickens where you see both side by side, okay? The next type of inheritance we're going to look at is sex-linked. How do you recognize sex-linked? Um, again, this is not autosomal. You still have a dominant and a recessive, but when it's sex-linked, remember you have the male is most often a 
affected. Okay, so the male gets, gets it most often um, in sex-linked traits. Okay, and this is because he only has one copy. Um, so these tend to go from mom to children. And don't forget with these, you only get female carriers as well. So only females can carry a sex-linked trait. I don't have room to write that here. You need to write that right now. Only females can carry these sex-linked traits, okay? On a Punnett square, you're still doing the 2 by 2 but don't forget that you label the X chromosome, okay, and that you don't label the Y chromosome. So on a Punnett square, these are carried on the X chromosome, so the X chromosome gets letters, but the Y does not. The next one is polyallelism. Okay, and the way you're going to recognize this is its blood type. Okay, human blood type. That's the only way this will ever show up on the EOC. It's the only example you were given. That's how it's going to show up on your test. That's how it's going to show up on the EOC. Okay, so with this, remember, the allele is I, and I has an IA form, IB, and then there's a little I. So you have a combination of two of those three alleles making up blood type, all right? The last one is polygenic traits, okay? Now, polygenic traits are just what they sound like. A trait that's controlled by many genes, okay? Now, think back to your baby lab. When you did your baby lab, you had several of these polygenic traits where you flipped the coin multiple times to determine what the phenotype of your baby was. Those are polygenic traits. The good news is no Punnett square for this. Okay, so Punnett square out of the question here. Because you're used to, up until polygenic traits, every trait was controlled by one gene. Here what you've got is three or four genes controlling a specific trait. And you recognize this in a couple different ways. You recognize this, first of all, because there's a spectrum of phenotypes. And this is going to run over into the next, sorry. Spectrum of phenotypes. What that means is um, with these traits, you don't have two or three or even five phenotypes. You have many phenotypes, and the difference between one phenotype and the next is really, really slight, okay? And these also tend to occur along a bell curve, and I'm just going to draw that, and we're going to talk about bell curves on the next slide. All right, so polygenic traits, okay? This is what we're still talking about, polygenic traits. Basically, the more dominant alleles that you have, the more something gets added to the phenotype. Now, on our baby lab, for example, uh, your baby's hair color, your baby's skin color were both controlled by these polygenic traits. Okay, those are prime examples. Another good one is human height. Okay, um, so let's just take height as our example for right now. Um, the more dominance you have, the taller you're going to be. Okay, so the dominants are adding height to the phenotype. If you have fewer dominants, you have less height, okay? Um, and when we're talking about a spectrum, if you kind of look around the room, when everybody's standing up in the room, notice how you could line everybody up from the shortest to the smallest, and you might see very little difference between two people close together in line. That's what we mean by spectrum, right? Um, every single one of you could be a totally different height. You know, you might be a half inch different from one another, but that's what we mean by a spectrum of possibilities. Okay, now, here's the other thing, and you're going to do a polygenic trait demo, but you're going to learn about why it is that you get bell curves with these. Okay, and basically, if you look at the phenotypes, okay, and you look at 
the number of uh, people okay, with each phenotype. What you find is with these polygenic traits, most people are not super, super tall. Okay, so you don't get most people over here on the spectrum. You'll get a few tall people. Most people are not super, super short. But if you lined everybody up, most people would be somewhere in the middle. Okay, so most of the individuals fall in the middle on a polygenic trait, and that's another way that you can tell you're dealing with a bell curve, because if you look at it, this is kind of the shape of a bell. Okay, so you get a spectrum of possibilities, but the spectrum of possibilities occurs along a bell curve with very few at the extreme short and the extreme tall, most individuals falling somewhere in the middle. All right, that's what you have to know about polygenic traits. You just have to be able to ex uh, to recognize them. You do not have to do anything else with them. And again, just keep these these kinds of of examples in mind.